Where's the king in yellow? <laughs> Walking down the halls. What are our relative distances from the mask? Who's closer? The mask is kind of you know, on the farish side of the room. Uh, you're probably a hair closer, but only a hair. Boy, I think I just break into a dead sprint. I, I mean, honestly, I think I do too. <laughs> Excellent. Y'all are sprinting. I think this king in yellow is going to at least attempt to sprint as well, or at least shuffle with grandeur. Uh, this is a race. Specifically, like, the, the fate mechanical terminology for this is, this is a contest, because these are two groups competing for this same goal. Get the mask. So it is going to be sort of a skill challenge, essentially. Y'all are going to roll at the same time to attempt to get closer to our goal, and whoever rolls the best earns a victory, and whoever earns three victories gets their objective, be that the mask or whatever else this is a contest for. So what are y'all uh, doing as you see this uh, this king in yellow attempt to shuffle towards the mask now that it is in his sights? Noel and uh, Denny, y'all are racing ahead is what I've gathered. Uh, Humphrey, Vance, what are you doing? I'm going to try and help them out by shooting at him, the king in yellow, I mean. Okay. Hopefully slow him down or stop him. I like that. And what are you doing, Vance? I think I'm just getting a good look at the king in yellow. Same same deal. I'm trying to see if there's any anything that seems like a weakness, anything that seems like I can exploit against him. All right. Sounds good. So you're using your uh, your stunt to get your sized him up aspect. Yes. With one free invoke. I support that. Humphrey, I'm going to ask you to uh, roll your shoot first, and um, are you, like, trying to hurt the king, or are you trying to slow his roll? I think I'm trying to slow his roll uh, to stop him. Okay, in that case, this is a, a create an advantage using shoot. Okay. Uh, against kind of his, in this case, passive physique of three. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a two. Okay, that is insufficient to slow his roll. So he uh, he is not stopped by your shot. He he absorbs your shot without even seeming to be aware of it. Okay. Denny and Noel and the King, we're all going to roll our athletics uh, simultaneously to see who gets closest to this mask. A six from Denny. Ooh. A three for Noel. Okay, Denny. You have not only succeeded, you have succeeded with style. And in a contest like this, that means you earn two successes. Okay. Which means uh, you have two out of the three you need to get to this mask first. Oh, nice. <laughs> I uh, I don't know what all's in here, like, otherwise, like, display-wise, or even, like, the, you know, partitions and stuff between displays, but I am just imagining, like, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, flitting across the leaves, like, just, ha, 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 ha. Oh yeah, you're you're up in the air. It's it's majestic, like a gazelle you are. <laughs> but you aren't there yet. You are very close. But the the king wants this thing. He's going to uh, attempt to hurt you. I mean, fair. So let's all roll uh, one more time. Except in this case, uh, the king is not actually rolling his athletics. He is, in fact, rolling to control Carcosa. He is using his, uh, I'm going to call it his will, oh. in the hopes that it will adjust the universe to his needs. Oh, God. Go ahead and roll your athletics, if that is what you're doing. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's a five. All right, Noel. Two. All right, uh, the king in yellow does not want you to get this, so he is spending a fate point. I have seen the way Carcosa works. I have seen this weird exchange of reality. I'm more familiar with it. And you know what? We've got this. Are you giving yourself a, a pep talk? I, <laughs> <laughs> I am too excited about my jaunt right now. I don't think I can fail. Okay. Uh, no, I think I'm just invoking my aspect of relentlessly positive to burn a point. Go for it. Godspeed. Relentlessly positive. <laughs> Which would bump me up to a seven. I love it. 
to death. The king literally, he like opens a door that is not there <laughs> that leads him into the realm of Carcosa, disappears from reality as you know it, moments later opens the other side of that door, just directly next to the mask. Reaches his skeletal hands out to grasp it, but like the very moment his talon fingers close, yoink! It is in your hand, Denny. Congratulations! You win! You now have a horrifying object of power in your possession. <laughs> oh, God. Wear it, wear it, wear it. Oh, you are so curious, aren't you? <laughs> Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> His face! His face! <laughs> oh my god. Um, so, uh, yeah, I wasn't planning to do this, but it's such a good idea. In fact, like, it's calling to you. Now that you are touching it, Denny, the, the mask is urging you to put it on. Oh, god. I think I look at this mask. And that curiosity is just overwhelming, but I just held up the next best thing to dying Vance in my arms because of our bad decisions, and I, I, I think I shake it off. Okay, so that co- that cost you a fate point to resist the compel, but it is a you know growth as a person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a very empty circle on my sheet right now. You don't do that, but you do still have this manifestation of the king in yellow staring at you. Hate in its eyes. Like, I'm just standing here wondering, is it as simple as breaking it on the ground? Like, I I just, I literally don't know. The king takes a step forward. He raises his arms in the air. uh, And suddenly, like, the room you are in begins to descend oh, God. like uh, like an immense elevator shaft. Uh, the walls around you become the stone walls of Carcosa. Uh, and you find that you are like now descending in a Carcosan tower. Can I use my corruption stunt to know how we would destroy this mask? I am going to say that I don't even think you need to use your corruption stunt on this one. Like, I think that is something that you you specifically, like, as you planned for this mission before you went back in time, yeah. you know, learn everything you can learn about the mask was uh, uh, sort of your, your top priority. Um, and as far as you are aware, this mask is a physical thing. Um, like, it's just made of what appears to be, like, a very kind of strong bone, perhaps, that it would be, like, not easy to destroy, but just you can smash it until it's smashed, and it will be smashed. I think that with that realization and seeing the king in yellow approaching Denny, Noel shouts out, Denny, pull! (laughs) Uh, yeah, I will turn and frisbee this thing that way. Mask is in the air. The Yellow King is watching it sail. And he's probably going to watch it burst into pieces as I shoot it out of the air like a clay pigeon. Yes. Beautiful. Go ahead and and roll shoot on this. I still have that boost very aware. Is that something I could add to it if this uh, doesn't go my way? Or was that only for like traps and things? That was pretty much for traps and things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, let me make an argument. This is trap shooting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been great, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Go ahead and give me a roll. See what you got. You don't. Okay. A one. A one. Oh, uh, my God. That is not a lot. But I, I did roll a defense for this mask, and it was a negative three. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, so, (laughs) I think that, yes, you are actually successful in this attempt to shatter the mask. In the air, it bursts asunder. Little bits of eh, bone shards uh, spray the room and spray the king in yellow, who just, to the extent that you can see expression on what is left of a face, looks aghast. But he doesn't go away. That's totally fair. He, like, 
attempts vainly to grab shards of the mask out of the air and maybe he gets a couple like bone shards which he then places on his face where they just sort of stick in somewhere and he points at you and you can just feel the uh the rage coming off of him yeah actually that's exactly what i'm thinking is i'm going to grab a few myself just to make sure that he can't collect them all Ooh, interesting i think i'm gonna yell out just say it's over the mask is destroyed your ploy for additional power is done it doesn't mean you're done but now you're just wasting time oh <laughs> that's a good line and it it would be really great if the king in yellow paid any attention to that no Oh, that's true. He does kind of defy time. And so, yeah, the king goes on the attack. The king, uh, in fact, I think how this happens is uh, the king kind of shudders in place and suddenly abruptly disappears from where he was and is now next to you, Humphrey, and just strikes at you with his uh, big clawed hand. Uh, I want to see if I can use fight to defend myself, knowing how to fight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he did roll a five for his attack. Oh, no. That's okay, because I rolled a zero for mine. Oh, that's not great. Uninvoke only gives you a plus two, right? It doesn't give you the option of a reroll? Uninvoke does give you the option of a reroll. Is my size you up? Is that an invoke that I can share because I can, like, point out the things I observed about him? Yes. In general, free invokes can be shared as long as you can justify how Humphrey could take advantage of it. I mean, can I spin it as just me taking the piss when I was what I was saying, like being enough of a fly in his ointment that he screws up his shot, like that he screws up his attack? Sure, I'll buy that. Like he he is still aiming at Humphrey, but he is distracted by you. Uh, yes. Okay, I buy that. In which case, Humphrey, if you would like to re-roll, I would love to re-roll. Please do. That is a four instead of a five. Okay, that is that is better. So uh, he hits you for one, but alas, uh, the king in yellow is the bringer of sickness. He has a stunt. The first time this manifestation of the king in yellow deals a physical hit to a target, they must absorb it using a consequence, which will indicate the effects of the king's plague upon them. So everyone has uh, three slots for consequences, a mild... Uh, moderate and severe, that absorb two or four or six uh, shifts of damage, respectively. So despite the fact that you only took one point of damage, you need to use your mild consequence slot and create an aspect that describes what this hit of the king and the sickness associated with it is doing to you. Upset stomach. Worth noting... Uh, I now get a free invoke of that. That'll probably come into play. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. This king does you just a a, a nick of damage, but not too bad. Humphrey, how do you respond? I think I just have to uh, fight this guy. I want to say, like, you know, in this fight, he's up close, but I I know, like, you know, the, the CQC, the close quarters combat so I can shoot and, if I, if necessary, block with fighting. So I'm going to try and shoot him. Uh, he's going to try and essentially fight you off by pushing the gun uh, out of the way. Uh, that's a plus four. Unfortunately, he gets a uh, just a three on that, so he does take a little point of damage as a little bit of shot just sort of rips through him. It doesn't seem to have, like, hurt him much. He's, he's still big and, and still angry and still just smoking with uh with disease uh noel what are you up to i think that seeing the king in yellow appear over by humphrey that you know we've described that he is very tall uh, and so i think i'm like getting low and just charging at the back of one of his knees to try to like knock him down so we can all run okay i like that uh so i would, I would say this is creating an advantage knocked down yeah i love it but like would this be with physique to like physically muscle him over I think physique makes the most sense, yeah. Possibly versus his physique to maintain his composure. Okay. Five. Five? Nice. That succeeds. Uh, He got a two. So that succeeds actually with style, which means the king in yellow is 
knocked down uh, with two free invokes on it. Uh, he falls to the ground. Uh, he has been silent this entire time, but I think this is the first like sound that you hear him make, which is just a, a tiny, tiny little grunt uh, as he hits the ground. If we are going to go, we should go, or else begin stomping him. <laughs> Vance, what are you up to? I guess I'm gonna run away. You have kind of descended into a Carcosan tower. The walls around you are solid stone. I want to look around and see if there's a way out of here. Uh, go ahead and give me a roll. Try and beat, oh, a two of investigation with investigation. Uh, that's a four. Oh, with a four, yes. You, uh, you peek around and you find that you are... Your your descent in this tower has taken you to the ground floor, uh, and there is hiding behind a kind of display of like, canoes and things like that, just a big old uh, display. There is an arch that leads you out into uh, what appears to be that same outdoor area, that same quad that you uh, wandered through before with the fountain and the night sky above. I think I could pick up our trail back the way we came originally? That seems likely, yes. Yes, you could. Okay. Can I start running now? Uh, yes, but you won't get too far before other people get to act. That is okay. I'll just give a call out, like, follow me, I know the way back. Denny, what are you doing? I don't think I want to run. We've got him down. What is the terrain over here like where he is down like what is there stuff in this room it's so you know I, I think you know what i'm getting at but i don't uh, is there stuff to jump off of yeah yeah there are lots of displays uh of of various uh artifacts that you can climb up on or dash through is there room to break dance fight <laughs> <laughs> there is exactly enough room yeah. to break dance fight. i mean yeah if i see him down i think i'm gonna go ray mysterio on his ass like i want to kip off of something flip in the air and just try to bring a boot down on his skull oh please do yes oh my god <laughs> what's an eight get me wowzers an eight, an eight gets you a lot because <laughs> his defense was frankly abysmal uh he did roll a negative Four. Oh <laughs> my god. I assume all four of those dice landed at the same time. All yours were minuses, all ours were pluses. <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, he, he does have a, a plus three in fight, so that's a negative one to your positive eight, which is nine points of damage, which is astonishing. That is enough to give him a severe consequence. Uh, you get to inflict an aspect on the King of Yellow, reflect uh, representing the damage you have done. What do you want to do to him? I, I feel like with the description of bringing my boot down on his face, I like the idea of like his forehead, like his freaking eyes are just like crushed in. Oh, boy. Eyes crushed in. Yeah, you, you <laughs> stomp his cranium flat. <laughs> Sending the crown careening off down uh, one direction or another. As you, like, lift your boot, part of his head that you have crushed sort of sloughs off and becomes absorbed in the, uh, in the stonework, <laughs> in the stonework floor. And the, uh, the king is still here, but, you know, most of him. He's 95% still here. Just an important 5% that has been uh, uh, removed. Um, I am going to do something fun. You are in... Carcosa, uh, uh, Vance, since you are the one who is kind of most on your own right now. Carcosa as a city is not kind. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it has the stunt, Visions of the Impossible. By spending a fate point, the city of Carcosa can induce hallucinations in anyone who can see one of the yellow signs. This is a fantastic mental attack. Um, and I think what is happening is that as you attempt to sort of scout out the path you took earlier, the kind of runic inscriptions all throughout Carcosa flare yellow, uh, and they make an attack on your mind to try and uh, distract you. Uh, and you would probably use will to uh, defend yourself. Um, is this considered a form of backlash? Uh, this is actually not considered a form of backlash, I'm afraid. Well, it was nice knowing y'all. <laughs> That's a nothing. 
That is a zero. That is uh, six points of mental damage. So how does this work? I've only got four boxes. Okay, so you can check those four boxes to take off four points. Uh, And then what is left over needs to be a consequence. Uh, A consequence is you have three slots. You'd probably use the mild, would absorb the final two points. And that is a negative aspect uh, about, in this case, the sort of damage that the city is doing to your mind. If you have an idea for what that might want, what well, you might want that to be, let me know. I'm kind of just thinking like doubt. Full of doubt. I like full of doubt. Yeah, like he's always every now and then he leans on Noel to like remind him that all of that this is all real and somebody else has been through it and now he's alone in it. I think he's just just afraid like he might be this might be all in his head or it might be real and it's just for him he doesn't know and i think that is like the the hallucinatory vision that you are given is uh you have these sneaky memories shoved into the the back of your head of a of a life that you lived between 2020 and 2030 where the king didn't appear what's that episode of the next generation where there's like a space probe and picard lives a whole life and he learns the flute You know that one? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great episode. You, Vance, you have distinct memories of that time that you learned the flute in 2026 (laughs) because there wasn't a plague everywhere. And all that happens and it feels beautifully real. And then suddenly you are back here? Or are you? Is this the real one or was the other one the real one? You are uncertain, which is, I think, really hard for someone who thinks he's always right to feel just uncertain. Yeah. And that is the city of Carcosa itself attacking you, which brings me back to the king in yellow. The king is going to uh, is going to attempt to attack you, Denny, because you did smash in a super huge chunk of his whole face. Cool, 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 cool. So uh, he is still on the ground. He is still knocked down. He uh, reaches up and tries to grab your leg and uh, really just yank it off is his goal. Oh, my God. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to try to literally flip over his uh, grip if I can. Please do. Can you beat a six? Oh, let's find out. Nope, that would be a two. Okay. Uh, so, now worth noting, uh, he is knocked down. That does have two free invokes on it if you wanted to use one or both of them to, uh, raise that up and take a little less damage. Or you can just, you know, get a little crushed for, uh, uh, four points of damage. Do you want to use one of these invokes to re-roll? I don't know how you rolled compared to how you be. I mean, I have a lot of potential for growth here. (laughs) Yeah, could I use an invoke to re-roll? I'll let you do that. Okay. Why, thank you. Hey, no problem. Four. That brings me up to a four. So that is a tie. No, that is not a tie. That is, he still beats you by two. Can he use the other one? He can use the other one if he wants. Do you want this last? Do you want my plus two? If you'll let me have it. That's what it's there for, baby. Okay. I guess I will to bring that up to a six. Okay. Yeah. He tries very hard to nab you by the leg and yank you to the ground, but alas... You are uh, too, he's too knocked down for that, giving you all of the uh, uh, mobility you need to just dance around him. Outstanding. Yep. Uh, Humphrey, what's your plan now? I mean, since he's down, I mean, this is a perfect time to shoot somebody on the ground. He's going to try and roll out of the way. All right. Uh, that is a three. To his zero. Nice. He, uh, he gets a little bit shot, but he's, uh... He's feeling, he's still, he's still up. He's still active. Uh, is that a, uh, success with style? Uh, that is a success with style, uh, which means you get a boost. Oh, I think I forgot that on my, uh, on my boot suplex too, oh, didn't yeah. I? Oh, you know what? You do, you have earned yourself a boost. Feel free to give yourself an appropriate boost as well. Sticky shoe. <laughs> <laughs> or something that makes sense to you. What boost are uh, you taking, Humphrey? And it can also be like a boost that is towards the king. I mean, a boost that is, this king is hurting, would work as well. Yeah, I, that, that sounds good to me. Uh, anything against the king is great. I, I can't think of a really cool phrase or anything like that at the moment, but does it always have to have a phrase, though? It doesn't always have to have a phrase, just as long as you sort of know that it represents having shot him super good. Lead okay. poisoning. 
Oh, lead poisoning. I like it. Yeah. I think I just want to call mine boot goes here. Boot goes with here. the idea of I know where he's a little squishier now. Oh, you. Noel, what is your plan? I think that hearing Vance say like, hey, I know where to go. Come on. Uh, that I'm looking to see where he went when he started to run off. I think if you follow him, you will find him probably at this point wandering around a little bit confused, uh, unsure of what's going on and whether this is reality or not beneath the Carcosan sky. Dr. Benson, I thought you said you knew which direction we should head. Am I like back in my right mind, but just very confused about it? Back in your right mind, but very confused. You are you are out of flute time. I, I was... I learned to play the flute. <laughs> I, when am I, what's happening? We have just destroyed the mask that the king in yellow was after. He is now knocked on the ground and you are trying to lead us out of Carcosa so that we do not die here. Yeah, I think he just kind of blinks several times and like nods to like clear his head. Where are the other two? Just inside that tower, still fighting with him. Hmm... Uh, Noel, you know the ends justify the means. Uh Uh-huh. It's probably most important that you, the time traveler with all the knowledge in your belly, get out of here as soon as possible. It's not really necessary to save these other two, is it? You know what's a shame? Huh. I don't have that aspect, but I was having the exact same thought. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, that might be the case. Um, But my other aspect, that Denny reminds me of my humanity, probably counterbalances that thought. If it was just Humphrey, probably. (laughs) But because I have that relationship connection with Denny, I don't think I give in to that thought. That's good. I'm I'm glad you didn't give in to that. It's sweeter this way. I mean, it'll be sweeter when the king kills all of you together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so in this moment of, you know, us out here trying to figure out what we're going to do, I'd like to create an advantage as we try to find our way out of here using the, the effect of my corruption stunt. Oh, I love that. Yes, please do. Uh, six. That's awesome. Uh, so you're trying to, I, I mean, I think in this case, let's just call this, uh, this aspect the path out. Excellent. Which is not normally something that the lost city of Carcosa has, but, um, in this case, since you got a six on that, that is, uh, two free invokes. So you, you know the path out of here. Uh, Vance, what are you up to while, uh, she is scouting the path? Unfortunately, I don't have any such reservations about leaving Denny and Humphrey behind, I don't think. Like, I don't feel this fatherly attachment towards Denny. I don't know that he idolizes me yet or anything. Okay. It's important for us to get out of here. So I think if Noelle seems like she is scouting the path out, I am just also on the way out. In which case, let's cut back to Denny on the inside. Foot full of yellow. Uh (laughs) Yeah, I don't think I've gotten really any new information here, and I feel like we're doing well. So I think he's pressing this attack. Okay, I love it. Please do. Okay, and kickflip. Not the skateboard kind. Yeah. (laughs) Flip kick. Oh, uh, can I use my boot goes here to add a little extra to my roll? You certainly can. You know where the boot goes. The face part. And he's still on the ground. Yeah, that's true. So that would make my four up to a six. A six? Excellent. Uh, He is attempting to defend with his ability to roll away, and that is but a three. He is actually going to be taking another consequence. Uh, Not only are his eyes crushed in... Oh, and you know what? I, I didn't mention this before, but it's probably worth... Uh, uh, mentioning eyes crushed in is an aspect that y'all have a free invoke on if you wanted to uh, just beef that up a little bit more I mean I can't imagine why not okay so that take it from a uh, uh, what is it three points of damage to five points Uh, and he's still taking a moderate consequence what serious lasting damage have you done to this entity I like the idea of his jaw being mostly off now (laughs) oh Jaw mostly off. Yeah, you you boot goes here him right in the jaw. Lots of teeth go flying, and as they hit, again, the stone of Carcosa, they are sort of absorbed in to the material. The king is is still around, still struggling to, um, well, struggling to anything, really. But it is now his go. 
boy, is he unhappy with you, Denny. Fair. He is going to take advantage of all of his diseasediness, and he is going to uh, do an attack using, in this case, shoot, that is essentially imbue you with illness. Oh, God, okay. It'd be great if you could beat a, a five on this. I mean, I'll sure try if he is just sending vileness at me, just try to freaking backflip away from back this. Backflip away from his his gross disease spit, yes. Ugh. <laughs> And he rolled a what? A five. I hit a five. That is a tie. That's good. He does not do you any damage. Uh, he does get a boost, unless you want to uh, invoke something. I Yeah, I, get, I don't think I have anything to use at the moment. But it doesn't hurt too much if he has a boost on you. I'm just going to call him dripping with vileness now. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, it didn't hit you, but it sure got everywhere on him. Uh, just... Grotesque uh, liquid disease all over his whole face. Humphrey, you are up. I also have no real reason not to just keep killing this guy as much as possible. Uh, So I'm going to I'm just going to shoot this guy some more. All right. Godspeed. Uh, I got a two, so oh. I'm going to invoke my lead poisoning against him. All right. Uh, He... In attempting to uh, absorb this shot, you got a two up to a four? That's correct, yeah. Okay, he got a three. He takes the hit. I mean, he takes the hit direct to the chest, I assume. I assume those chunks go flying into the walls and getting absorbed and everything? They do go flying into the walls and getting absorbed, yes. Noel? Now having a clear sense of the way out of here and still hearing... Like the gunfire from inside. Yeah, no, it's, it's violence inside. You can hear it. Boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this again. Can I try to know um, if in previous encounters with the king in yellow, like if he was bodily destroyed? Because the history is that there were many of him. Um, so I want to know if destroying this body here does us any good. I will say, and I will give you this for free: destroying this body will not kill the king in yellow for real yeah this is a manifestation an incar an, an avatar if you will do i even think it would slow him down a lick you don't think that destroying this body will necessarily slow the king in yellow's ultimate plans uh whether it will keep you safer as you travel through carcosa yeah, actually give me a lore roll on that try and beat okay maybe something slightly complicated a four yeah beat a four with lore a uh, five. A five. The king in yellow is of Carcosa. This is his land. The knowledge sort of drips into your brain from one of your little, from your internal mainframes. Uh, and that if an incarnation of the king is destroyed, a new one will emerge in Carcosa. You can kill this body but it won't necessarily make things easier for you as long as you are still within this terrain. Yeah, I think that knowledge that having him in the condition that I last saw him seems like it might actually be better for us than if he were to be totally destroyed and just instantly refreshed. Uh, so I think that I I stop and I, I say as much to Dr. Benson and then run back towards the door to, to shout to them to, to follow us. Benson, what do you do? I mean, Noel is the one that I wouldn't leave without. Mm -hmm. So if Noel isn't leaving like without them, then I I would turn around and follow her back to warn them and try to get them out of here. You're you're sticking with Noel. She keeps you grounded. Yeah. If if you tried to leave, I would have compelled that anyway. So yeah, nice. Worth noting, you can essentially compel yourself if you are making a complicating decision for yourself based on an aspect. One could argue that that is a self-compel, which, in which case, you would get a fate point for that. You are staying where the danger is even though you don't want to be. Wait, so I get a fate point out of this? You get a fate point for that. I have a lot of fate points <laughs> and I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Denny, you are next in the order. Noel has just told you, don't kill king yes ma'am and i am gonna turn and nod at humphrey let's go dude because like everything that they have said seems to be right you know these people know what they're talking about and so when i hear that 
like this is what has to happen. I I have no reason to doubt that. Oh yeah, except my let's go. I know the way out. <laughs> except for that one. You just said let's go. She said don't kill it and why? Mm, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I am a doctor, you I know. assume this is happening <laughs> in real time. <laughs> <laughs> Humphrey, are you running as well? Uh, yeah, I go where Denny goes. Uh, if he says it's time to go, it's time to go. Y'all turn to flee. Behind you, the king in yellow drags itself to its feet uh, and tries to pursue you as you uh, as you endeavor to make your escape. Uh, we're going to... Uh, run through the the kind of escape from Carcosa as a challenge, which is sort of the uh, mechanical term for a series of connected overcome rules where everyone sort of gets to do a thing to contribute to your eventual success. Cool. So you have this mysterious, twisty uh, land to try and escape from. You are being pursued by an avatar of really disease and death itself. You will need to do a couple of tasks, kind of divided amongst the four of you as you see fit. You will need to uh, navigate your way to an exit. You will need to prevent the king from catching up to you by some way or another. You'll need to take care of any plague bearers that crop up uh, as you as you make your way. And then when you get to the museum, when you finally escape from Carcosa, you will have to finally escape from the museum itself. Uh, four tasks, uh, and this will kind of work itself as a montage as you decide which one of these tasks you want to uh, to take, and you will roll for it, and we'll find out how you do. I have a pitch that I will take care of the plague bears that pop up because I can fight them because of the lore knowledge and because I'm immune to their diseases. That makes perfect sense to me. I think I would have to take care of the king um, because I can uh, I can take care of him at a distance if need be. And the farther he gets behind, uh, I can still keep him at a distance. That makes sense. I guess I'll navigate us out of Carcosa. And then that sort of leads you with uh, leading the charge out of the museum. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of is trying to make the way safe by going over, you know, whatever the the worst terrain is in this messed up place, like trying to get up and over it so I can pull them up, give them a lift down, whatever is necessary in that wrecked building. That is beautiful. Uh, I think uh, as far as our montage goes, let's start with... Vance, Dr. Vance Benson, navigating us out. How does that look? Uh, I think I am like scrutinizing every turn. Like when we come to to an option that I am just like quick to look it over and puzzle out which one is the right one. Would you call that a uh, notice or investigate? Uh, I could go either way. I was kind of thinking investigate. It feels like investigate to me too. I feel like this is a relatively challenging i'm hoping you can beat a four on this i got a two but boy i just have a tremendous number of fate points so i think uh, i'm gonna invoke my that i think i'm always right uh that i've just i'm just confident and that i've puzzled these out successfully yeah and then i think i might invoke another to make sure that this totally succeeds oh you know what you could invoke is one of the uh free invokes on uh noel knows the path out right yeah that's true that's okay, because I was kind of, what I was going to say is I might invoke Noelle keeps me grounded in terms of like, she trusted me to do this part of the job instead of her, so I must be able to do it. Hell yeah. Hell, um, I might do both of them to succeed with style. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, dang. Goodbye, two fate points and one of those invokes. And that brings me up to a an eight. Uh, and hello, a boost. Expert navigator, or something along those lines. We we see Dr. Uh, Vance Benson scrutinizing his way through this mysterious land. Behind, the king in yellow is slowly approaching, decrepit, dragging itself forward. Humphrey, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use my fastidious nature to uh, bring out my outlandish item. Of course you are. <laughs> 
And uh, the outlandish item is I've had this backpack on me this whole time, but it's like, well, what's in the backpack? Uh, You know, it's whenever we need it. And it is a giant bear trap. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I'm not even going to make you roll for that one, I think. Oh, nice. Yes, as you as you uh, stride forward through the halls of Carcosa behind you, you hear a uh, shunk, and then a scream uh, of of horror and dismay <laughs> that goes on for a very long time as the king is stuck in a bear trap. It's like Dead by Daylight getting the trapper to step in his own oh, trap. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, at this point, you are getting closer to the museum, where the alcoves full of corpses are, and as you pass by, they are uh, full of these plague bearers. These, I mean, these zombies, these undead uh, nightmares. How are you going to keep them from, uh, from killing you, Noel? I think that I am, as I'm running through, like Dr. Benson has pointed out the way, and so I'm kind of flanking him and charging ahead and just shoulder checking them out of the way and then backing up next to him again so that I'm always running down the direction that he has indicated we're going to go next. That is great. So this shoulder checking feels like it could be either be physique or fight, depending on... Uh... Yeah, and I don't know ultimately with my stunt if it matters because since I'm attacking... Am I attacking or overcoming, I guess? Oh, I mean, I would say this is an overcome. You are trying to keep them from getting in your way. Okay. So, yeah, I think I'll go physique then, that it's physically hitting them hard enough to push them back far enough that by the time they get up and come at us again, we're already past. I, I love it. There are a lot of them, though. I hope you can beat a, a four. Okay. All right. So I have a four. For this, if you wanted, I could give you like a success at a cost. Uh, where the cost is probably you will take a, oh, a moderate consequence. Yeah, I think I want to save this last invoke on the path out for Denny. So, okay. yeah, I'll take that. So, yeah, you take a, a moderate consequence because, well, most of them you can shove back with ease and, like, the disease isn't a problem. They do still try to, like, scratch at you. So you probably have some sort of, I don't know, ripped up syntho flesh. Which is the uh, new modern music genre. <laughs> <laughs> ripped up syntho flesh. I already have the quote that's the first album of that kind, too. Oh, yeah? Your own future blood (laughs) (laughs) oh yes so we see noel take some damage she is now dripping blue stuff whatever blue stuff powers uh synthetic people it's all over the place but you do finally make it out of the carcosa uh and as you sort of emerge from the uh, these twisted stone halls uh, behind you, they start to fade away, uh, as if now without a uh, an occupant, uh, Carcosa is leaving the museum. But you are still in this torn up museum, full of lots of damage, lots of uh, corpses. Some parts of it are now definitely on fire. Uh, Denny, how are you going to lead us to safety? Yeah, I think uh, I am just trying to sprint ahead, see those points that are broken down, like that stairwell that could barely be traversed and, uh, you know, anything like that. I just want to jump my way up, crawl up, whatever, as fast as I can and get to a point where I can pull each of them up when they get there or, get you know, boost them down if I, you know, have to get lower and so on. Uh, I think once again, this is going to be try and beat a four. Relatively challenging. Okay. That's a five. That does it. You are uh, nimble, and your parkour skill is such that not only are you able to make all of the great important jumps, you can also tell what jumps other people might be able to make. Nice. You've you've sort of got that parkour sense of what is doable for the others, and you are able to lead them on a slightly more circuitous path uh, that, with your help, they are able to uh, get to the front door and out and out of the museum. Uh, where you see a bunch of police still waiting there, uh, shocked to see someone actually come out. Hey, oi, what happened in there? You said it's on fire, right? It is definitely on fire. Oh boy, my objective is just to keep them talking long enough that this whole place burns. Because there are still a bunch of plague bearers in there, right? 
There, there are. There are still monsters in there. Yeah, they got to burn. So I'm just weaving a, a narrative. Hell, it might even be mostly the truth. As long as it's compelling enough, they're listening and not reacting to the to the museum. Uh, could I help set up an advantage with this by showing them my uh, my military ID and saying, yeah, this is definitely a military matter where this place <laughs> needs to go down. There is there's a uh, quarantine that needs to happen on this building. And it's got to go. Call in the CDC, call in the military. This is out of your pay grade. It's going to take some time, but you boy, we need to get the big guns in here. I love that. I I mean, I think, well, sure. Go ahead and make, uh, make a roll on this. A, uh, what would it be? <sighs> Rapport? Provoke? Uh, I can do, I can do a little bit of provoke. Whichever one of you wants to make the roll, the other one can give him a plus one for being a part of this story as well. <laughs> That's a one. Um, I'm going to invoke head of parapsychological research to throw a lot of terminology at them that will confuse and confound them. <laughs> I love that. They are confused and confounded. And you have this soldier by your side who is also uh, helping out. So he'll give you a plus one for his presence as well. So a total four. Total of four. I, I gave the Metropolitan Police Department a sort of simple up and down roll for do they believe you. And they got a plus three. So you are keeping them busy. You are keeping them well informed. Are you mentioning the monsters or are you just talking about disease? I think I'm pretty much framing this as a... As a a disease thing. Okay. Um, these these aren't the people to give this information to. Fair. I think it's more likely to just cause a panic. We know whose research we need to advance, and we know who we might need to tell about this. But the random London cops are not it. And in in the fullness of time, uh, um, the whatever organization for major disease control exists in uh, in England comes out and they quarantine the area. By which time, most of the the inside of the museum has been just burned to cinders. I think the the monsters within get caught up in the fire. Uh, nothing else gets out. Not. A plague bearer, not the king in yellow, not a shard of Carcosa, and not old Vance, who you just left in a tower in a city that is impossible. Yep. So we'll see what comes of him later. But for right now, you have uh, successfully uh, engaged in your mission to destroy the Pallid Mask. Woo! Hell yes. yes. Nice job, guys. Congratulations. Still have some face on my boot. Yes. Thank you so much for running us through this, Ed. This has been great. Yeah, yeah this thank rules. you so much. Uh, thank you. The next thing that would happen in a uh, longer ongoing game is that I would uh, track down the sort of ripples you have made to time, and I would change the timeline. Uh, so for all of the other events, those would change from uh, from how they were before based on how well or how poorly you performed at this particular uh, event. So without spoiling too much, could you give us an example of, you know, maybe not even tell us what it is in the book, but tell us what it might be now, like something that we had effective in a, in a net positive or a, a negative? Sure. Give me just one second to look at my little notes here and make some decisions. Because I've been like tracking the things you've done on what is called the timeline track. That is what generates these ripples. Ah. Uh, and doing something like destroying... Uh, or nearly destroying an incarnation of the king in yellow is good uh, and will uh, uh, create a net positive effect. Um, and of course, destroying the mask, also big net positive effect. So what is going to happen is you have made a major change to the timeline. And when that happens, time lashes out. Time attempts to uh, uh, snap back to how it ought to be, which is impossible, and you, the ones responsible for changing time, will feel the backlash. This is the backlash that, uh, uh, Dr. Vance, you are better able to defend against. As you sort of stand near the ashes of the British Museum debating your next moves, uh, all of you suddenly feel like the world turned to static around you, and your memories of everything that uh, is or was or will be uh, start rewriting themselves in your brain. An incredibly uncomfortable process. All of you are receiving a legendary plus eight Mental attack. What? Uh, use will to defend oh. against it. Uh, except for you, 
Vance, you use... Yeah, I'm going to mark corruption to defend with notice instead. I got a negative one. Oh, that's not, not ideal. I got a two. You got a two. That's cool. I got almost as high as I could. It's still not high enough. Uh, I got a six. You got a six. And uh, Vance, how'd you do? I got a three. Uh, so those of you who failed, uh, you have a choice in front of you. You can either absorb the damage you are taking with consequences and mental stress boxes as normal, or you may allow this uh, uh, this assault to corrupt you and take a corrupted aspect. I definitely will take a corrupted aspect. Yeah, I think I will die otherwise. I love it. Noel, this is your opportunity if you wanted to get your yellow runes. Yep, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the corruption and it would be ends justify the means would be the corrupted thing. And we would see Noel like etching these things into her synthetic arms that she saw on old Vance. I love it. Denny, do you know offhand, are you going to uh, be the lone human or are you going to let yourself be mutated as well? If you can absorb it with consequences, you can. I mean, I technically don't have any. I think I stay human. Okay. I love it. It's beautiful. Uh, we're going to talk about these corrupted aspects in a moment, but first you get a vision of the future. All four of you, as time rewrites itself in your mind, even those of you who have not been to the future, uh, it you know, it assaults you because you have been part of this process. And you see a vision of the king in yellow as he first appeared arriving on the streets of London, wearing his pallid mask, uh, surrounded by the halls and homes and towers of Carcosa and the plague bearers within it. Uh, and then it shifts, it twists in your mind as that mask disappears from the king, leaving him without it. And as that mask disappears in your mind, so too do the houses of Carcosa. They don't come with the king. He's still expelling disease in every possible direction. You can still see flashes of all the major cities on the world, but you don't see Carcosa forming about him, and you don't see the plague bearers coming with him. Something about his control over these elements is lost. And then you still see the disease spreading and the people dying, just slower, slower. An inevitable encroachment, but not an overwhelming one. And then abruptly you are back in the present, the vision of the future sort of clearing out of your mind. And uh, Humphrey and Vance and Noel... You also see that you have been changed in this process. One of your aspects, one of your free aspects, goes away and gets replaced by something new and mutated. And if you have an idea what that is, I would love to know. We don't have to go through, like, all of the process right now, since this is epilogue, but... Yeah, I, I feel like my new corruption stunt would be something similar to what Humphrey has of, like, once a session that she can activate these runes to like undo one roll from like uh, I was I'm thinking like one roll from from you mm -hmm. that has been done to her. I like that. I would definitely play with that. That is good. Humphrey, do you know what's happening to you? What has twisted? I don't know yet. <laughs> you know what I feel like fits in a weird way is your character for, that we used to uh, write for on our X Men forum, Lim. Lim that you can take your body parts off and they're still animate. Oh, interesting. That makes a lot of sense if we think of this corruption as being like partially due to you being the one who is in the most contact with the King and Yellow's disease, which makes these zombies. Oh, yeah, that does make a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. Like if a body part is cut off, I still have control over it. That's badass. And uh, Dr. Vance, do you know what uh, what mutation is happening to you? Uh, I think I think Vance got some kind of like psychic attack. I think his brain having been attacked in Carcosa that this sort of rewrite and uh, bastardization of time that he got the ability to inflict a mental attack on others. You can make others think they're playing a flute. Yes, you too will love the flute. <laughs> we are all flautists now. I think that is that is awesome. 
and sort of in a long-term game our next step would be to uh play around with those and sort of settle on the the specifically mechanically how they work but for right now i think having a good idea of just how you have been twisted by your uh your encounter uh is pretty cool to me God, this is kick ass. Great. Like, if this were a longer campaign, like, I feel like we're actually in a good place. <laughs> you had a, a pretty good first, uh, uh, first event. Yeah. I, I'm sure it would go drastically downhill from here for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the thing that I have really enjoyed about this is that, you know, giving us that vision at the end so that we can see how we are positively affecting the timeline. Like, I'm terrified to know what the vision would have looked like had this gone badly but that's such a like sitting around a table and having these victories and then having that victory kind of reconfirmed for you at the end is a really cool narrative device yeah Mm -hmm. i i love the like getting to choose a bad and or a good like i like i really like the idea of corruption in this that it's kind of double-edged like it's something's wrong but also you've kind of got a superpower out of it i also like that there's a (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, choose your own fate option here where it's like hey this seems like something that would happen i agree or i don't either i win something or i lose something <laughs> yeah i i like that where you get to kind of spend this well this literally this currency of fate uh i am just still hooked on aspects and how you build the character through that i think that's so cool and you know while that is just interesting in general this is the first fate game i've read through where it really inspires me to create um so i think the world speaks to that and how you know how y'all built how these campaigns work around that um so yeah it's just it's really exciting to build something through those aspects and you know being able to create something singular and interesting in this horrible horrifying terrifying world i think it's so cool going off that aspects thing like the idea that we can create characters that are unique and they're not tropes that we have made out for us already that we can be the adventurous butler that we can be uh the indiana jones but maybe we want to be the indiana jones from the future or something you know it's it it's so open and uh you have so much to 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 draw from uh, either from nerddom or from your own, like, you know, individual uh, mind and everything. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. I can tell at least one of the four or five designers of this game is super handsome and very intelligent. <laughs> yeah. 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 Whoever, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, thank you, Ed, for joining us and for running us through this. Uh, if you at home would like to get your hands on Fate of Cthulhu, you can go to evilhat.com. It is out right now. The stars are right for Great Cthulhu's return. It's up to you to make them wrong again. Fate of Cthulhu by Stephen Blackmore, P.K. Sullivan, Ed Turner, Leonard Balsera, Misha Bushager, and Sophie Lagasse is available now at evilhat.com. To enter for a chance to win your own copy of Fate of Cthulhu, visit thecritshowpodcast.com slash F-O-C. Contest ends February 16th.